and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some new champion discussion. We have three brand new champions with our new expansion, Guardians of the Ancient, that is being released tomorrow, Wednesday, May 5th, I believe. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. We haven't really discussed the new champions for y'all on YouTube and of course with everybody here in Twitch chat as well. So here we go. We're going to have three new champions. Our first one is Zillion. So here's the card right here, as you can see. So Zillion, two mana, one, four, play, create four time bombs in your deck, then predict, and it levels up whenever I've seen you destroy two allied time bombs. Okay, once Zillion uh, levels up, or I guess let's let's talk, then we have time bomb, which is which is right down here. So this this uh, down here is the time bomb. So um, you know you create the four time bombs in your deck, and then you predict. So you can uh, maybe kind of go look for those time bombs. And once you have destroyed two time bombs, that's when you level up Zillion. So Zillion is a t so sorry. So land, uh, time bomb is a two mana landmark that says when I'm summoned, draw one. So that's really nice that it replaces itself, and you advance other allied time bombs one round, and then it also has countdown deal one to enemies and the enemy nexus. Leveled up Zillion has, uh, you know, turns into the 2-5 and then for 2 mana, then round start, create a fleeting copy of each non-fleeting card I saw you play last round. And of course, whenever, still whenever you play it, you create the four time bombs in your deck and then are able to predict. Okay, so let's kind of talk about this, this champion here. So first thing is Zillion creates the time bombs in, in your deck. Now time bomb is not a card that you can put in, in your deck by itself. Um, so the only way to get time bombs in your deck are, is from Zillion. A time bomb is gonna be a very good landmark. You know, it does have the, whenever you summon it, you get to draw a card so you replace the time bomb. So it's not like, you know, you put the, the four cards into your deck, but then if you do draw those time bombs and you play one, then you get to draw another card. So it doesn't kind of, take up like your your way of uh getting through the uh getting through the deck it does say you advance other allied time bombs one round so that means you basically have to be able if if you had two time bombs you play them both in the exact same turn that's like the only time that that would matter because it has countdown one so it, it's going to count down the very be beginning of the next turn but deal one to the enemies in the enemy nexus so if you play Blighted Ravine before, that's four mana. It heals your Nexus for four. It does two to everything, and and you know the enemy Nexus, your Nexus, all that kind of stuff. Time Bomb's kind of similar, except for it's not dealing damage to anything on your side, just only the damage to your opponent's side. And it's also half of a Blighted Ravine. It only costs two mana instead of four, and it's dealing one damage instead of two. So that's that's so that's a pretty nice little card, and that's going to help out against. Um, strategies of decks that are going wide um it's not like your opponent can play around it that much because just like blighter ravine the turn that you play it then the very next turn at the beginning of the round so i guess the the very next round at the beginning of the round then your time bomb is going to go off now to level up zillion you have to do that twice you have to find two time bombs and honestly i think i think that's something that's going to be really difficult to do finding and destroying two time bombs now you get one predict so you get to look at three random cards in your deck and put one on top, and so you maybe you'll find a time bomb there. Um, but that's still not even like a great chance that you find a time bomb there. Um, and so I think I think Zillion is going to kind of play a little worse than it looks. I could be wrong about that, but I I don't know. Um, first things first, I guess, is you, you're going to want to play a very long game with Zillion. You're, so Zillion is definitely a control champion because you need you need a lot of rounds to be able to find these time bombs. And um, then once you have your leveled up Zillion, you still want like more rounds for like creating more value with the fleeting cards and everything. So this is definitely a control champion that's trying to play a long game. It's, this is not like a, you know, you play Zillion, curve out and attack a bunch and try to kill your opponent by turn four, turn five, something like that. That's not that's not going to be Zillion. All right, so we're looking at Control Champion here. Um, the the Predict is nice. Now, you probably want to play a deck that, like, like the Predict is going to be valuable whether or not you grab Time Bomb, right? Because if you're playing a, a, a Control deck with Zillion, if it's going to be a Control Champion, then uh, you're probably going to have a lot of answers in your deck, right? Like a lot of removal spells and interaction spells like that. That's what Control decks usually have. 
And so having the predict means that even if you don't find a time bomb, depending on what the matchup is, or you can find like the whatever kind of interaction spell is going to be very useful for you. So, you know, maybe you're playing Zillion with Swain and you have a Rachnoid Sentry in your hand, but you don't have Ravenous Flock. And so maybe the Zillion helps find Ravenous Flock, for, for example, you know, they can help that out that combination or anything like that. So the, the predict's going to definitely be valuable with the Zillion. But still, I we'll have to you know kind of see how it plays. But it it feels like from reading the cards that finding and destroying two time bombs is not going to be easy. This is not going to be an easy champion to level up. Um, think about how many times I've played like because for just for example, I've played a lot of Xenotype Researcher in Sharima, three mana three three that you give plus three plus three to three random allies in your deck. And then it's really difficult to draw those three random allies. Think how um, sometimes you do, and it's nice, but there's a lot of times you play Xenotype Researchers and you just don't find those allies like much at all. And so that could be the same kind of thing with the time bombs. You know, you do create four of them instead of three, but you need to find two of these time bombs. Anyway, you know, sure you have the one prediction that could maybe help you for the first one, but then you gotta find another time bomb. That could be pretty difficult. Now we're also always kind of thinking about zillion playing zillion on turn two and you play zillion on turn two you're going to have a lot more rounds and a lot more card draw to be able to help find those time bombs but remember things don't always go according to plan and whenever we kind of um just uh talk about new cards in general this is just human um instinct is we we think about the positives and we think about like oh yeah like think of like what if this happens this happens you know we're, we're just positive people by nature and that's good that's a good thing Things aren't always positive. And what if we don't have Zillion on turn two? What if we don't have Zillion on turn five? What if we draw Zillion for the first time on turn seven, turn eight? That's very, very possible. So we're playing our Zillion on turn eight. That's going to happen in a good amount of games for the very first time. Now we get to finally create time bombs in our deck. The good news is we have less cards that we're mixing the four time bombs with. Our deck size is just going to be smaller because we're going to have... Um, you know, we've already gone through eight rounds of drawing cards, but still, we're now still mixing those up with those other cards. Like, how long is this game going? Is it, If this game ends at round 10, we only have a couple of rounds to even try to find, um, you know, time bombs at that point. And, and so, like, if we, anytime that you play a game where Zillion is, you know, not a card that you have until the late game, right? Like, if you just don't find Zillion at all until the late game, it's going to be really difficult for zillion to have any kind of impact right because then you're looking at just like a two mana one four with predict which maybe that predict is really valuable in the late game i'll give you that but the time bombs are going to be less valuable because the threats are going to be a lot bigger by then and um yeah the one four body just not going to matter that much so um yeah i'm really worried about like how zillion will be if you don't have zillion on turn two or turn three um that can be pretty tough Plus also Zillion, Zillion can block, I guess, being a 1-4, but doesn't doesn't block that well. Three twos are kind of like the the regular size of units right now, right? Like there's tons of two mana three twos. That's kind of like the bar. And so Zillion against two mana three twos doesn't match up very well. It would be able to block a three two, yes, but then Zillion turns into a one one, the other unit would turn into a three one. Um, you know, it doesn't trade. It's not like like if Zillion was a two four. That would kind of work out a little better, where it would kill the the three two and be able to stay alive. But at one four, um, you're hoping it can kind of block a one drop, like a one. You know, one drops are usually two ones, two drops are usually three twos. Just kind of you know, generally speaking. So I don't know. I think you know, like we're definitely gonna be playing Zillion, obviously, and we're gonna be playing it with different uh, control champions. Um, you know, it, the first things that kind of come to mind as pairings for Zillion are maybe like Swain, where the one damage for the, the bombs um, get, and like all the damage this does, like how that can can really matter. Um, also, since we want to play a slower game, a longer game, that kind of brings you to Targon. Targon's like the best control region right now. The predict could be really nice with Targon. Like maybe you can, maybe you need to find a star shaping. Maybe you need to find a hush. You know, you can find what, what you need with that maybe uh so maybe pairing zillion with like a zoe as like a control um deck that could be nice um and you know maybe the predict maybe you need to find some protection for your zillion or your zoe anything like that um 
So, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. But I, I am very worried. Like, I think this is going to play a little worse than what it looks on paper. Right? Like, that's just my prediction is that Zillion's not going to work out as well because I feel like it's going to be difficult to actually find two time bombs and level up Zillion. Um, I think level up Zillion is really, really powerful. I think this create a fleeting copy of each non-fleeting card you saw, uh, I saw you play last round. I think that's great. I think that's very powerful. Um, you get to create, you can create lots of cards each round depending on what happens. Um, yeah, I think I think that's awesome. I just feel like it's going to be difficult to level up Zillion and everything like that. And then also drawing a Zillion in the late game is going to be a pretty poor draw. Um, but you know we'll, we'll have to see. All right, so that's Zillion. Then our next champion uh, was is going to be Malphite. Zillion plus Victor. Yeah, that sounds good. Victor also wants to play a really long game and wants to just create a whole lot of cards. And of course, the uh, those landmarks, the time bombs, those are going to count as created cards. So yeah, those, those certainly work well together. Um, yeah, so I think Zillion seems like it's going to be a kind of like a hit or miss champion, right? Like there's going to be some games like where you get to find the time bombs right away and it, and you play Zillion right away. You get to hit draw your time bombs and it, it does awesome. Like the time bombs really help slow your opponent down. You, you level up Zillion. It's super powerful, right? Like there's going to be games where it's awesome like that. There's just also going to be the other games where it's turn eight and you're struggling to stay alive and it's a close game and then you draw a Zillion and it's just like a one four and, and you get to predict, but it's like worse than the... You know, you're basically looking at inspiring Chronomancer at that point. I think that's the name of the card. The, the Chronomancer that's the two mana, two, three predict. <laughs> you know, and you're basically looking at the same card, and that's your champion. So not so great there. Um, yeah. So, you know, like, so I think it'll be kind of like a hit or miss. You know, high variance champion. Could be really good. Could be not so good. All right, our next champion that was revealed was Malphite. So Malphite originally, this is the one on the right is the original Malphite this time. So seven mana, six ten with tough. So we're talking about a champion that's not dying. <laughs> it has ten health to begin with, and it also has tough. Um, yeah, it is not dying. <laughs> uh, then you've also summoned twelve plus mana of landmarks. That's how you level up Malphite. So you have to summon twelve plus mana of landmarks. When I level up, if you have the attack token, you create an unstoppable force. We'll talk about here in a minute, and the leveled up version of, of Malphite is going to be, you know, the 711. And uh, whenever you summon or round start, if you have the attack token, then you create the Unstoppable Force in hand. And Unstoppable Force is really, really powerful spell. So only two mana. It's slow speed, but only two mana to stun all your enemies. And by by the time that you have like your seven mana champion that's leveled up, we're talking about towards like the end of the game, right? Like we're talking about like, you know, round round eight, round nine, something like that. And so you're gonna be able to, with this unstoppable force, it's it's also, it's created the round, like when you have the attack token. So you have the attack token, you've created this unstoppable force, it's slow speed. You're gonna be able to like spend the, the rest of your mana developing your board, putting more things out there. And then finally you leave your two mana and then because then, because then your opponent's going to want to like develop their board also, right? Because they're going to want to be able to put blockers out there too. But you get to then play Unstoppable Force, stunning all their enemies. Now they don't have any blockers left. It gives them priority. Sure, they get to play one blocker with that priority, and then you get to attack with your with you know like your whole board. Um, that should be very powerful. And so leveling up Malphite is going to be a very easy way to end games and, and have this unstoppable force end games. So now we have to get to the how do we level up Malphite. First of all, it's a seven mana champion. So that's going to, you know, you're going to have to stay alive a while before you can even get to playing Malphite. And then you're going to need to summon 12 plus mana of landmarks. And honestly, like there there are some, some new landmarks that are okay, but they're not, we didn't see like landmarks that are just like overwhelmingly really powerful. Um, with the new expansion. Probably our two best landmarks is we're going to have this new Daybreak landmark, which is probably going to be the best landmark to kind of pair Malphite with. I think if we're playing Malphite, um, we're probably playing three of this new five mana landmark here. And so this is Eye of the Rahoric. It's a five mana landmark and it has countdown one, you stun the two weakest enemies. So you can play it when you have the attack token. And so then when it goes to the next round, 
countdown one goes away, and before they can attack you, you stun the two weakest enemies. That's a very good way to delay the game and make it uh, make the game go longer for Malphite. Now, if that was it, that wouldn't be too great, but it has the Daybreak. Daybreak, you summon a copy of me with Countdown 2. So that, that means that you get to summon an exact copy of this Eye of Rahoric, or I guess, you know, one with Countdown 2, but that's another summoning another five mana landmark. So for five mana with the Daybreak, you get to put two five mana landmarks into play that does count as 10 mana of landmarks. So that's why that's going to be really important with Malphite is play this with Daybreak. Now you have... 10 mana of landmarks and now your Malphite is basically leveled up. All you got to do is find two other mana of landmarks to play. So I think those two are going to work really well together. Um, and so kind of looking at like where Malphite kind of fits, um, you you can you can see like Malphite, of course, working with other champions with landmark, you know, so maybe or like the, the deal with landmarks. Of course, the, the one that the obvious one is Talia, right? Talia cares about landmarks, but Talia is not really that great of a champion. Now, Talia does copy a landmark. And so you do resummon another landmark, and that does help level up your Malphite, because you need to summon 12 plus mana worth of landmarks. That does help level up your Malphite there. But as we've seen, Talia just overall, besides doing that, just really isn't that uh, powerful of a card. So thinking of other things we can do, Malphite does kind of fit with Zillion. Because, of course, the time bombs are landmarks. And Zillion wants you to play a long game. Malphite wants you to play a long game. So they, they both incentivize the same kind of thing. So you could maybe build a control deck with these two. The Time Bomb, of course, is two mana. And that fits perfectly with how we talked about how um, either Rahoric costs, you know, does 10 mana. The Time Bomb does the extra two. There's your 12 mana for your Malphite. Um, now, other ch like I think Malphite can also fit with some champions that don't necessarily need landmarks, and I think that the one champion that kind of stands out is maybe Leona, because Leona is also going to be Targon, just like Malphite, and since we're playing this landmark with Daybreak, um, Leona also has Daybreak, and Leona is really good at slowing the game down, because Leona, like when you have your leveled up Leona, each time you play your Daybreak, you stun an enemy, this Eye of the Rahoric is stunning enemies, the Unstoppable Force stunning enemies. You can see that there's there's some synergy here of stunning a bunch of enemies and with the Daybreaks. And the Daybreak, they're they're good defensive units, right? Especially the, the two drop, um, but you know, like they're good defensive units up the curve. Um, so the Daybreak plus Malphite plus this uh, landmark does look like a pretty uh, powerful combination. I think that's where we'd probably start with Malphite, with a, a Malphite deck is maybe Malphite with Leona and uh, trying to do that kind of thing because um, that'll give you multiple ways like if you don't have your Malphite you can also have your Leona um, that your Leona is stunning things this thing is stunning things you can also get really good like attacks um, and maybe lethal attacks with like your with your um, daybreak units and with stunning uh, your op the opposing blockers then you also have like this new daybreak card Solari Stun Sunhawk that's also Daybreak stun the strongest enemies. You know that's as you can see here. We got lots of uh, stun in the, that kind of uh, those putting those together. Yeah, perma stun deck. Um, another good new landmark is this this Rockfall Path. Countdown two obliterate the weakest enemy. That's that's a pretty decent little landmark that can help out with Malphite. But so I I feel like Malphite's going to be more of a, a niche champion. Um, it's going to have, it may have like a couple of decks, like maybe Malphite Leona is a real popular deck that, you know, gets to be pretty decent that whenever it's tuned and everything that you play against, but I think it's going to be kind of like your, um, you know, maybe more of a niche champion, kind of like, uh, Nautilus, right? Like Nautilus, you kind of play Nautilus with Maokai and that's, you know, Nautilus plus Maokai. That's a deep deck that deep's a pretty decent deck. And you see that a, a decent amount, but you don't really see it other places that much. Malphite's a little less niche than that, but I think it's going to be kind of that kind of champion. It's not going to be like the champion where you just put Malphite with everything. Um, I don't think it's going to really be like that. Uh, now, another thing I could see with Malphite is I could see Malphite being a one of at the top end of different Targon decks to just be a way to finish games out. A lot of Targon decks will maybe play like one Aurelian Soul at the top end. You know, if, if we're talking about like a Zoe deck plus something else, you play like one Aurelian Soul at the top end to help close out games. I could see Malphite just being a one of that when you have your level, you know, wait till you've summoned 12 plus man of landmarks, have your leveled up Malphite, finish the game with Unstoppable Force.
maybe it's a little far fetched, but you know that that could be a thing also. So you'd need to play like a Zoe deck that cares about landmarks. You know, maybe a deck with, um, you know, like Veil Temple and and stuff like that. And maybe you throw this in here. Um, yeah, you know, that's a possibility, but maybe not. Um, yeah, Yasuo and Malphite. That's going to be a little difficult to do just because of like the as far as like leveling up Malphite, but that's that's definitely. Um, yeah, that's a good combo, right? Like, if you have Yasuo in play and then you stun all enemies, that's going to be crazy. It's going to, like, level up your, your Yasuo right away. It's going to do a bunch of damage to all your enemies. The thing is, is Ionia doesn't offer very much in the landmark category. It has a couple, but doesn't offer that much in the landmark category. Sorry. And, uh, and then also, it's if you're already stunning all of your enemies to begin with, I'm not sure if you need Yasuo to do extra damage to those enemies that are also stunned already. So I'm not sure if like the Yasuo is really that necessary with that. However, you you know, you can still work with that. Like Targon now is having even more cards, like just even, you know, like this card with Yasuo, Solari Sunhawk, Sunhawk with Yasuo. Targon's just having more and more cards that stun, and so that is good for Yasuo as well. I could see even like like these are good additions to like a Yasuo Leona deck though like um you know being able to play like these kind of cards those are those are good with Yasuo and Leona I think that maybe even like Yasuo Leona I feel like maybe got some more upgrades more so than Yasuo plus Malphite um you know th that's another option though too Malphite's champion spell is this ground slam that's definitely a good card for a Yasuo deck and just um you know like that kind of deck in general was done so okay so there we go, that's two of our champions. And then our third champion is going to be Irelia from Ionia. Um, so Irelia is gonna have, th it's gonna be a three mana, three, two, quick attack. When I'm summoned or round start, if you have the attack token, you create a flawless duet in hand. Um, and our flawless duet is over here. It's one mana, it's slow speed, fleeting of course, has blade dance too. So we talked about Blade Dance a little bit with the uh, Patch 2.7 reaction video that we just recorded and put up um, earlier today, for those of y'all watching this later on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> basically, the uh, the Blade Dance looks really strong <laughs> to me. So basically what this means with Blade Dance is if you play this Flawless Duet and you Blade Dance 2, that means you put two one ones. These blades are these one ones. Let's go down here. Here are these these blades here. They're they're one mana one ones that say obliterate me when I leave combat. But they're just automatically attacking, right? Like these aren't cards you put in your deck. They're automatically attacking. Um, so basically, this just means. So basically, you can just read this as one mana attack with two one ones. It doesn't take your attack token. Um, doesn't doesn't use your attack token. It, it's just you just attack with two one ones. And so you can do that usually when you don't have the attack token either. So if it's a round where your opponent would have the attack token, you could still, I guess not necessarily Flawless Duet, because you had to have the attack token for Aurelia to create that. Um, I guess that's the round star, you know. But if you play a card like Ribbon Dancer that has just play Blade Dance 1, you can do that whenever your opponent has the attack token, and then you attack for one with your little 1-1. One -one. And that's going to be useful for so many different reasons. Pairing, and there's a lot of different champions that really want you to be attacking um, and that re reward you for extra attacks. First one that most people point to is Azir. Because if you have an Azir in play, then whenever you attack, you get a Sand Soldier attacking. So whenever you Blade Dance and your Blades are just attacking, they just get their free attack, well, your Sand Soldiers are going to go ahead and join in. So if you have an Azir or the two-mana Landmark from Shirima that puts the Sand Soldier into play attacking, those things will just be attacking. Also, the Blades do count as allies. They're little 1-1 one -one allies. So that helps your love, your Azir level up because your Azir just needs to see 10 allies in play. Aurelia needs to see 12 allies attack. <laughs> Azir only needs to see 10 allies in play. That That's a little bit, a little bit easier to just put 10 in play. But anyway... That would also help Azir level up. So those two have some very good synergy together. Um, and I think that's where people are really looking with Azir, with Aurelia right away. Now, I like Aurelia with Misfortune. I think that Aurelia and Misfortune work really well together. Because each time you Blade Dance, you get an attack with Blades. And so 
all you need to do is get four attacks for Misfortune to level up. So that feels like that's going to make Misfortune a lot easier to level up. So you can, <clears throat> you know, play your Ribbon Dancer, you Blade Dance. Um, now that's already an attack right there. And, and uh, you know, if you have like some scouts in play, they can attack twice. Of course, stuff like that. Like you can get Misfortune to level up very quickly. A card that I feel like that could be kind of good with Misfortune and Aurelia and with these Blade Dances is something like uh, Playful Trickster, which is going to be Fizz's champion spell. Because basically how this could work is, like, let's say you have already attacked one time with your Misfortune uh, when it was your round. Um, and now it's your opponent's round. And you play your Ribbon Dancer, so you get to attack. So that's your second attack for Misfortune. And then you play your Playful Trickster. You remove it from combat, and then you gain the attack token. So now you have the attack token. And then if you have a Scout in play, you can attack with your Scout, and that's your third attack for Misfortune. And remember, you're getting the Misfortune ability each time you're attacking. And then after your Scout attacks, you get an another additional regular attack, and so now you can make your regular attack, and now your Misfortune's leveled up. And so you could really level up Misfortune kind of out of nowhere with Playful Trickster and Blade Dances and stuff like that, but... Yeah, that could be really cool. Um, let's see. Anyway, I guess we didn't really finish talking about Aurelia. So anyway, so once you've had your 12 allies have attacked, so you know your sand soldiers are attacking, your your blades are attacking, you've attacked 12 with 12 allies, and Aurelia does not need to be in play and see you attack with 12 allies. You just have to attack with 12 allies. Um, so then once that happens, then we level up our Aurelia, and now um, it's still when I'm summoned or round star, both of those, it checks. If you have the attack token, then create your flawless duet. But then also, whenever you have any allies attack, not necessarily just Aurelia, but any allies at all, you get to create Blade Surge. Blade Surge allows you to swap Aurelia with an ally um, at burst speed. Uh, so, that, so therefore, if you have just Blades attack with your Blade Dance, if your Aurelia is leveled up, you make your Blade Surge, and you can have Aurelia switch sp switch spots with the blade, and you can have Aurelia attack. Of course, you can also during combat, as it showed in the video, that you know if they block Aurelia and don't block something else, you can switch spots and have Aurelia do the the four damage to your opponent. It's just going to give you some some added versatility. The blade surge is going to be super flexible, and that kind of flexibility is is uh, really powerful. So I'm, I'm really liking this champion. I think the blade dances look really good. I think there's a lot of ways to, um, you know, have all the extra attacks that really get you rewarded for the blade dances. Um, we're we're going to find a lot of cool things to do with this. Somebody asked earlier, like, if you're able to make, like, a Aurelia control deck. And it really looks like Aurelia is going to be um, a champion that wants to attack a lot and uh, rewards you for attacking you know, even like the 3-2 body with the quick attack. Quick attack means you want to be attacking. And so it doesn't really feel like it's going to be a control champion. Now we've seen other champions like Draven that are usually all about attacking. The Draven has ended up being a pretty decent control champion when paired with like Ezreal because of the uh, spinning axes you get to create. So maybe there's something like that with Aurelia in the future. But just from first glance, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good aggressive champion. All right, so that's that's our champions. I think I'm I think Aurelia looks like the strongest out of the three, um, but you know we'll have to see. Uh, let's talk about just a couple of other of the newer cards, I guess, um, that I think are going to be really good. Um, speaking with with the Ionias ones first, I guess we'll kind of work our way down here. I think the Syncopation card is awesome. Two mana, swap two allies. I think this is going to be kind of what Ionia was missing. Like they didn't have two mana spells that were like combat tricks that were able to help them protect uh, champions or just other units they need to protect. Uh, we see cards like um, Freljord has Troll Chant, Demacia has Sharp Sight, um, Targon had Pale Cascade, which they still do, but you know, it's not as good as it was before. A lot of other regions had two mana spells um, to be able to protect their units, and Ionia didn't have that. And I think this could be awesome, this syncopation swap two allies. So basically this just means that, um, you know, like if they challenge one of your units, you can use syncopation and make them challenge something else. Uh, 
If they cast Vengeance on one of your units, you can use Syncopation, switch spots, now they Vengeance target something else. This, could, this can just be used in a really big wide variety of, of ways. This could be um, great with saving your champions from removal, but then also could be great used during combat. A, you know, like, let's say you attack with Lulu and you support something else, and then, you know, they block Lulu with, with something big, right? Like, that's going to happen a lot. Well, then you can swap it and, and have Lulu either get removed from combat or, you know, moved over to a spot that's not being blocked or, or something like that. Um, you know, you can help you, you can help save your support champions with this. So that this should help out cards like Lulu and Shen. You know, Shen makes a barrier. Maybe maybe you don't have a challenger though, but like they so they don't block the thing with the barrier, but they block your Shen. You know, you can sync a patient and switch the spots with them. I think this is gonna be a very useful card for Ionia. Um, another champion though, outside of Ionia, that the, this looks great with is Fizz. So Fizz Um think about like if you use a removal spell on Fizz. You can use a spell and fizzle that removal spell, right? Like, you know, that, that's what Fizz does. Well, so, like, let's say you have Fizz plus some other champion, and they try to use Vengeance on your other champion. You can use Syncopation and just put the Fizz in front of that spell and then use a spell and, and get rid of that Vengeance. <laughs> and so then they can't, you know, so it makes it really difficult for them to target anything because you can just always use Syncopation and swap the spots. And then suddenly, <laughs> their removal spell is targeting the fizz. Um, so yeah, so that so I I really like the syncopation card. I think this is going to be a a real good card for these Ionia decks, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, another good great way to save like Zed, right? Like that's uh, for sure. You know, like people try to kill Zed all the time. You can use a syncopation to help save it, or. You know, you attack with Zed and you get the Living Shadow and they use like, you know, Frostbite on your Zed and block to try to kill your Zed. You can use Syncopation and now they're blocking the Living Shadow and your Zed's fine. Um, you know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to have... Uh, Mer so a couple other like really, really good cards to point out. This Merciless Hunter is perfect for Shirima. This is a great card. Three mana, four, three with Fearsome is huge. And it has Fearsome. And it has play, grant an enemy vulnerable. We've seen the Bakai Sand Spinner, how it grants the enemy vulnerable and gives the minus one, minus zero. How that's really good at the four mana slot in Shirima. Now you have a great option in the three mana slot. These Shirima uh, Sun Disc decks have had... They have like the Golden Ambassador and the Bakai Sand Spinner at four mana, which are awesome. But three mana, you don't have like the best of cards. You have like Xenotype Researchers, but that's just kind of normally just like a generic three three. You have the um, the three four. I don't remember the name of it, but the, the three four that that um, has your Sun Disc go down three rounds, and that card's been pretty good. But again, you're just looking at a vanilla three four whenever it's in play, and it doesn't have any abilities or anything like that. I think this could like honestly fill the three mana curve to go along with the Zier better than either of those two cards because you know it has a keyword so it has fearsome but then also again it gives you interaction so you get to continue to play units to level up a Zier, but then also keep that interaction going grant an enemy vulnerable very very useful interaction for killing champions so i love this merciless hunter it looks great uh let's see what other cards are awesome that we haven't talked about chrono shift looks incredible so it costs seven mana, so it's expensive here. We're spending a lot of mana, but it's burst speed. Give an allied champion the next time I die this round, fully heal me and grant me plus three, plus three instead. So remember how whenever we had unyielding spirit at burst speed, how powerful that was whenever you'd have a champion that was about to die and you unyielding spirit it, and then, you know, that was it. Like that, how awesome that was. Chrono Shift is going to be kind of similar to that. You know, it's burst speed also... Um, it keeps the champion from dying for just one round, but it gives it plus three, plus three also, which is an incredible buff. And then any kind of, um, progress that your, your champion has towards leveling up, that progress is going to, going to continue to stay on because the, the, the champion does not die. Instead, it just gets healed and gets the plus three, plus three. So this could really work well with a card like Renekton. Think about like whenever you have Renekton and you attack in, and they they block with something and, and your Renekton dies during combat, but it was about to level up. That happens all the time. Or you know, like they challenge your Renekton, it dies during combat, but it's about to level up. Well now with Chrono Shift, your Renekton will level up. 
uh, because it's it doesn't die, but it will also just get healed and get plus three plus three, which sounds pretty awesome with a Renekton, including a leveled up Renekton. Um, yes, yeah, so this would keep this would keep Trindamir from leveling up. Yes, it would. It does. Um, but yes, yeah, so like this is great at just protecting all your champions. Um, yeah, it sounds aw like that. That just sounds really great. So like Chrono Shift, very excited about for Shurima. Another amazing card for Shurima is the Soothsayer. And this may end up being like the best card in the expansion that's not a champion, to be honest. For only two mana, giving your landmarks and your champion spell shield, especially your champion spell shield for only two mana, is really, really powerful. It's just not much mana at all. Um, it's very easy to play, like turn five, play Azir, and then play Soothsayer, and now your, your Azir has spell shield. Of course, it also gives your Buried Sun Disc spell shield if you're playing an all Shurima deck. But this just works with so many champions. They like give give Zoe spell shield, you know, give Zillion spell shield. They can do that for su such little mana, so easy to do that. I think this is going to be a very very good card, and it's all your champions. If you have multiple champions in play, give them all spell shield. I think this is going to be a great card. Um, yeah, Susair looks very good. Uh, so there we go. Um, those are some other great cards. Scrying Sands. Uh, I'm, I'm not as big into Scrying Sands as a lot of people are from just what people are like. There's a lot of people that are really high on the Scrying Sands card. It has the one mana, give an enemy minus two, minus zero, and predict. The predict's good, but I wouldn't spend like I, don't, I wouldn't spend a card to predict. Um, the enemy minus two, minus zero, that's that's nice during combat. I know it costs one mana, but um, you do have like the kind of combat tricks that uh, Shurima already has. It has the Scrying Sands with the plus three, plus one. I think that, or sorry, not whatever that card's called, <laughs> the the plus three plus one card. This one's Scrying Sands. I think this is kind of similar to that power level. Now you, like plus three plus one's a lot more valuable than minus two minus zero. You'd much rather have plus three plus one. But of course, with the minus two minus zero, you get the predict. So then you know that kind of uh, evens out there. But I, I think it's kind of like that same type of power level. Um, then you also have. Uh, uh, let's see. The, you also have Exhaust in Shurima, and I personally like Exhaust more. Exhaust is more of a removal spell, but you know you get you give the you can't use Exhaust during combat. You don't get to predict with Exhaust, but you get to kill things with Exhaust. And I think that, that is you know by giving it vulnerable. And I think that's probably more valuable than predicting or being able to use during combat. You know, get to challenge champions and get rid of them. So I, I'm I think Scrying Sands is okay, but a lot of people think this is a, a great card, and I, I just think it's okay. I think it's. It's kind of on the level of the other one mana spells you have in Shurima right now. And I, I kind of like Exhaust the most out of all of them. Because so I think that uh, removal is really important. Um, the question is, are you sure Chrono Shift would really prevent Trindamir from leveling? Is it confirmed? No, it's not confirmed, but how it reads... because. Trindamir says whenever it dies, it levels up. And this says the next time I would die, instead you heal it and give it plus three, plus three. So I think that it would not die. So it would not level up because it has to die to level up. That, that's just like how, from reading the cards, how I'd assume it would work. But, um, you know, with this game, like there's always surprises of how cards work together. But anyway, there we go. We're going to have this new expansion come out. Uh, I think this Sump Worker is going to be very good with the, with the Posse. I, I think that that's a very good uh, card, especially with the Terrative Improvement. Um, I think the, this Monster Harpoon is a great removal spell for Bilgewater that has definitely needed a removal spell. Thrashing Snapper could be awesome for Reputation decks. Like there's a, there's going to be a lot of good cards in here. Wings in the Wave is, is a very nice, versatile card. Lots of great cards in here. Very excited. Um, Dancing Droplets, definitely all about what I want to do like with the recalling and drawing cards. Love that Dancing Droplet. So yeah, very excited for the new expansion to come out. We will be playing the new cards tomorrow. We'll definitely have a new deck with each of these champions. We'll probably play Aurelia Misfortune, um, Malphite, Leona, and Zillion, maybe Swain. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll probably play all those tomorrow, plus another deck. Probably maybe play another version of all of them. Maybe play a couple different Zillion decks. Maybe a Zillion Targon deck and a Zillion Swain, something like that. We'll try that tomorrow. All right, but that's it here for the new champion reveal discussion. 
those y'all watching later on YouTube, what, what's your favorite of these champions? Let me know how do you want these champions to be used? What kind of pairings? Where, like, Aurelia plus what? You know, like, do you want to see Aurelia plus Azir? Or just, you got other ideas? Uh, yeah, give me those spicy ideas for the new champions or any of the new cards. Um, yeah, I would love to hear it. All right, but that's it here for the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next one.